Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the final day of the UCAT Festival 2020, the final day of UCAT Festival TV. But we are going out with a bang. Um, I am very pleased to be joined this morning by two of the people who were going to be hosting uh, the UCAT conference when it was to take place in Glasgow in April. Um, that is Heather Gray and Shiv Shang. Shiv, I, I got the, I got the pronunciation wrong. How do I, how do I pronounce your surname? T tell it's tell uh, Shan Mugam. Shan Mugam, there, the, my, there you go. Um, better to have you pronounce it, I think. Um, how are you both doing this morning? Uh, fine, thanks. It's quite early for me, <laughs> but yes, I, I'm I'm awake and well. Uh, I was I was out to get a, a coffee early. Uh, that that tends to I, I, I almost need it um, intravenously, having worked in uh, student services for. Yeah, and anyone working in academia, I feel we we live on on coffee, right? Um, so we're into the the last day of the uh, festival, and I think three really great days thus far. Shiv, has there been any particular highlight for you over the last few days? Oh yes, I think Tuesday uh, was it, and I uh, was in a session titled "Engaging Students with Technology." It was led by David Gray and George Steele. I was fortunate enough to be chair for that session, and it was a very, very informative session. I think both of them are stalwarts in this particular field, and the amount of experience and knowledge they have, and the tools they have, and they shared was fascinating, and it was very, very informative and thought-provoking, and I really enjoyed that session. Excellent. I think quite a few people have have taken a lot from the conference. And the interesting thing is the timing of it this year means that people will be going right back into their institutions and maybe able to implement those ideas, which is good. And I know that you are both um, running a session this morning. Um, maybe you could tell me and the viewers a little bit more about what we can look forward to there. Uh, yeah, I'll kick off on that. So I'm sure if you can fill in the blanks. Um, so we're doing a session on um, talking therapy skills, um, not just for dealing with um, the students who might darken our doors, but also for academic staff themselves. So the session we're running, um, we're going to be introducing um, delegates to particular skills in relation to um, a model called the five areas um, model. It's based on cognitive behavioural therapy. But we're not training anyone to be cognitive behavioural therapists, so don't get worried, folks. <laughs> um, it's the more basic, generic skills that any kind of counsellor or therapist would have. So we're looking at the five areas model. We're also then particularly targeting um, unhelpful thinking styles, because if you have unhelpful thinking patterns, that then drives how you feel and how you behave, whether that's procrastination or whatever it is. Um, and then we're looking at the, the seven column thought record diary. So basically it's quite a practical session. We're going to take um, delegates through these three particular tools and models and um, they should be able to apply that to themselves in their own lives if they're feeling stressed or anxious. I can't imagine anyone feeling stressed in these current times, but imagine that possibility that you're feeling stressed, you know. Um, these are very practical tools for yourself and that you could also use with your students. Shiv, have I missed out anything there? No, I think you've been quite comprehensive. And uh, it's, it's it's simple application in day-to-day -day life of an academic or student. If a student appears at your door a bit stressed and anxious about some issue, academic issue, anything, you invite them in and you talk to them. And this is about contextualizing that experience and talking about some listening skills and how to talk to ensure the student feels very supported and reassured and feels less anxious before they leave. You know, that's the whole idea. It's simplistic methods. Great. It's, it sounds like a really interesting session. And what time is that taking place this morning? 10 a.m. to 10.45, I do believe. That's okay, right. so in just just over an hour's time, um, we'll uh, we'll be popping this up just before nine. So delegates will will have an hour to um to get themselves ready. So lots to look forward to there. And although we were very disappointed that we weren't able to go to Glasgow in April, the hope is that we are going to have the opportunity to 
go and, and see your beautiful city and your beautiful campus in 2022. Yes, drum roll. Absolutely. <laughs> And I, I suppose um, the, the the plan, obviously, at that point is that we are uh, back to a, a face to face conference. Um, though I, I I think and and hope that some of um, the the new learnings that we've had, I think what's been really great about this has been the ability of people from maybe outside the UK. I know that um, I, I was talking to David Gray, and he was saying that I think um, some of the sessions yesterday had people people from five, six, seven different countries who were able to attend because you don't necessarily have the, the travel costs. So um, it'll be interesting to see if there are ways in which we can bring the virtual into the, those physical spaces uh, when when we're back. So I am really looking forward to uh, getting to, to Glasgow. Uh, any of my trips over have, have been fantastic and I was really looking forward to it. I, I know um, you would have put a phenomenal amount of work in because unfortunately um, mm. it was kind of right, right before the conference was due to take place when COVID hit. So um, hopefully some of the groundwork that you have put in will, will still be there and um, you'll be able to, to build on that nicely for 2022. Um, I want to thank both Heather and Shiv for taking the time to chat to me this morning. Good luck with your session. Enjoy the, the final day and um, hopefully I'll see you in Swansea next year and Glasgow in 2022. Yay! <laughs>